So today I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the Microsoft Level 3 Basic that we have here. Uh, Level 3 Basic is an extension to the Model 1 Level 2 Basic. It adds uh, various commands to the system. It loads from cassette. It is incompatible with the various disk operating systems. Uh, once it's loaded, the system just becomes a regular cassette based system uh, with the Level 3 Basic extensions added. You can transfer uh, the Level 3 Basic image to disk, but once you load it from disk, again, DOS is gone, everything's gone, it just becomes a Model 1 cassette-based system with these extensions. So it comes in this nice little box, which of course comes with a cassette that at the moment isn't in the box. Well, we'll dig the cassette up. There's a quick reference card. Apparently this card cost two additional dollars. I don't know if it originally came in the box or not. There is a manual. You know the program instructions for Microsoft Level 3 Basic Manual. It's got the loading instructions, etc. Uh, you know, this is back when Microsoft was in Bellevue, Washington. I'm trying to remember the date I saw in here. I found a date someplace in here. Several places we see written by Bill Gates. Uh, the Andre, uh, Andre Lewis and David Bunnell names I don't actually recognize, although I'm not a don't know a lot about Microsoft history. Copyright 1979, Microsoft. Uh, like I say, several places it references was written by Bill Gates. The manual seems pretty comprehensive. Uh, it appears to do things like take the error messages and expand them, so you know rather than NF next without four, etc. Uh, add some graphics commands. Uh, some place in here it talked about, you know, it opens a new world of gaming, etc. Uh, I think not. At least not from basic. Anyhow, we're going to see if we can get the cassette to load and take a play with it. So here's the hardware we're going to use. This is a, a monitor I got on the first TRS-80 I acquired this year. It's nice and functional. Uh, it's sitting on top of an expansion interface that we're not going to use. Uh, this is the expansion interface I, of course, acquired with this. I'm simply using the expansion interface to hold the monitor up. Make it a little bit easier to see. There's a Tandy cassette drive down here. It's a computer cassette uh, recorder, CCR81. This was an eBay purchase some time ago. We have a Model 1 system expander and a Model 1 replacement expansion interface here. Uh, so the replacement expansion interface is of course here with floppy controller, uh, serial I.O., uh, all kinds of wonderful stuff. It just goes onto the TRS-80. And then we jump over to the, the other board here. It's got hard drive emulation, uh, Ethernet capability, things like that. It's, it's actually a really nice uh, little device. It's got a parallel port on it and a serial report or serial port, etc. So, you, you know, the hardware from Bartlett Labs is really nice. And then we have under the dust cover here, which of course you're not going to get a good view on because the camera is too close. Uh, the Model 1 itself. This is the third Model 1 I acquired this year. The one that's in really excellent shape. If you've watched previous videos, it's the one with the uh, Reverse video mod where 789 turn it off and I think GAHJ holding the keys down together turn it on. This has also got a Sprinter 2 uh, speed up board in it. Uh, it's on port 254 and you, you know if bit 0 is a 1 it's in high speed. If it's a 0 it's in low speed. And this has got the LED mod. Sorry about the squeaking tripod. It's got the LED mod down here where if the LED's green, it's high speed. If it's red, it's normal speed. So anyhow, there's a quick walk over the hardware we'll be using. So uh, let me find the cassette and we'll get going. So let's go ahead and wake the TRS-80 up. I'm just going to uh, boot straight into basic, holding down the brake key. As you can see, the system has woke up with the inverse video mod as the default operating I hit 789, it's toggled over to regular video. Uh, I've got all the expansion hardware on here, in this case, simply to get the ex uh, extra memory. We've got a 48K system. 
And here we've got the uh, level three basic cassette. You know, same thing, 1979. Microsoft Consumer Products out of Bellevue, Washington. It's a nice little box. Uh, I, the cardboard insert insert is actually done pretty nice. I, you know, it, it's it's good looking little package. The uh, Level Three Basic Cassette. According to the manual, there's two copies of Level Three on this cassette that are the non-disc loadable version. Then there's two copies of D Level Three after that that you can actually use the cassette to disc transfer program. Uh, to get those on disk, and as I mentioned earlier, if you do that once you run it, you lose your uh, full disk operating system. You're just trapped in the level three basic. So uh, we'll get this queued up and see if we can get it to load. So I've got the cassette and the recorder. It's rewound. Per the manual, we load this through system. In the manual, the way I read this, it lev space three up here you can see it lev space three although i know it's actually just lev three without a space so you know it's a bit of a formatting issue perhaps in the manual anyhow let's see if we can load lev three am i doing this right correct yes lev three let me go ahead and hit play on the recorder and we'll let this run uh the manual harps and harps and harps on not using the remote motor on, uh, motor on and off plug on the cassette recorder. It makes the claim, and, and I don't think this is true, that once the cassette is loaded and it uh, opens the relay back up to stop the motor, that can cause the cassette to write accidentally to the tape and ruin the tape. Anyhow, we can see the uh, asterisks are flashing up there in the upper right-hand corner, so we know it's attempting to do something. So we'll just let this load. So I pulled the monitor in a bit closer to give you a little bit better view. Uh, we have level three basic hopefully loaded. Let's go ahead and execute it. And there it is, level three basic Microsoft Consumer Products, copyright 1979. I believe it uses about five and a half K of RAM. Uh, let's take a look. So yeah, we're about five, a little over 5K less than the default. So we actually have it loaded, which is pretty nice. So the first thing we run into here in the manual are abbreviated key entries where we can hold down shift and hit A through Z and have it you know, automatically uh, enter the command. So if I hit shift G, it'll insert a go to. Looks like shift O, we'll do a print using, etc. So it you know, gives us some quick shortcuts to make typing a little bit easier. <laughs> Uh, I have to think it would have taken some time to get used to those. You can create your own abbreviated entries. Uh, there's a way to renumber program lines. So the level three uh, system replaces C save and C load with a save and load command. Uh, they're interchangeable and the manual claims are more reliable than C save and C load. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, we get expanded uh, error messages. So you know, rather than NF, we get next without four as their string, which is kind of nice. And now we move on to the level three computer graphics. Uh, it's got some interesting features. You can draw lines and rectangles. You can actually get and put character arrays, draw something to the screen, uh, get it as an array, and then uh, put it back on the screen. So it seems like a very primitive, potentially sprite mode. I haven't played much with it. It can run in quote two modes of presentation. One of them is the standard character based, 16 lines by 64 columns. And the other is the quote graphics mode, which is the you know, normal mode of the model one, uh, 48 rows by 128 columns. It talks about the standard TRS-80 graphics, and we're all familiar with this if we played with graphics in the TRS-80. It's got some uh, programs here to display graphic characters. It's the standard stuff again we see on the Model 1. Uh, nothing surprising there. And we get into how to draw lines and rectangles. So we see this little command here. Line XY to XY and set to set uh, the pixels and reset to reset the pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and give one of these a try and we'll see what we get. So, 15 line, 
we'll go from 10, 10, syntactically this is kind of odd, to 40, uh, don't know, 40, 90, comma set, 100, go to 100, and let's see if it draws a line. By golly, it drew a line. So, no surprise there. If we edit line 10, oop, wrong line, edit line 15, and we come out here to the end, and we do a B, and we're going to need to insert, is it comma B, yeah, comma B. That'll tell it to create a box rather than a line, and there's a box. And if we edit 15 again, I keep forgetting there's no auto repeat here. And we add F, that'll draw a box filled. So if I add a line 20, that is do a line from let's say 12, 12 to 38, 88, reset, box filled, it should draw the full rectangle and then clear the center of it. Obviously I've got stuff going off the edge of the screen. Uh, my being dense here, probably. I'm drawing that first rectangle off the edge of the screen. 12, 12, let's see. And I'm assuming have I got X and Y transposed here in my head? Quite probably. Uh, I sure do. So, well, such is life. Uh, Let's get this correctly on the screen. That's better. At a 20. I want to change this to an 8. Change this to a 3. Get rid of line 16. And run. And that's exactly what that should have done. So. Uh, we can draw lines, boxes, uh, filled or not filled. So we'll just keep playing here. 25 line. And we'll go from 10. Oops. Hard typing around the camera. 10, 10 to again 90, 40. Set. 30 line from in this case it should be 90 comma 10 to 10 comma 40 and if I did this right in my head this should draw an X in the middle yes so you know it's primitive but it works uh, it's not super fast. Let's go back and just let this loop for a bit and get a feel for speed. Which, you know, surprisingly, uh, or not surprisingly, honestly, it's not super quick. Of course, it's an interpreted basic. But, it seems to work. So, so I went, written a, or wrote a quick little basic program here to just kind of play with the graphics, draw rectangles on the screen, did a little overlap, and create a interesting pattern. I guess if you can call it interesting. So we can see it running here, and of course it's setting the same pixels over and over. 
but you know there's something playing with the line command so let's now save this see if we can actually on the third attempt save a program rewind the cassette throw my little program away load I will have to spend some time and play with the uh, I'll call them sprites the uh, little array graphics objects Ah, and there it is it's actually loading however that really doesn't look correct to me. Now, whether that's an issue with old tape, these tapes are normal bias, so they should work, although they're not data sets, quote unquote. I'll rewind here a bit and tweak on the volume a little bit. Uh, I'll take it from a five to a four. Five was where I loaded the level three basic. So I should just be able to do a load and grab the first program, I believe. Rather disappointing. Uh, but, of course, the bias on these tapes is probably much different. So it did find the first program on the tape. There it is. So bringing the uh, volume down helped with the issue. And we'll let it crank away here and redraw the same great little uh, display. Oh boy. Pretty inefficient and it's drawing the same pixels over and over and over. Uh, let's add, let's just play here a bit. Let's add a, 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 another line command. X comma Y. Actually, let's make this a little bit different. 127 minus X. 47 minus Y. 2. X comma Y. And we'll reset the pixels on those lines. That should create an interesting little, as it's doing. That's actually kind of cool. And at 50, we'll go back to 10. You know, that's for what it is, that's kind of interesting. And this will just run and do this weird little looping thing. It's a little interesting to me. It's not completely symmetrical. Uh, I wonder if set and reset can actually use variables and set instead of set and reset. No, well, that's kind of fun. What else can we make it do? Uh, Now let me look here through the manual. I mean, pretty much we have this line mode. Okay, that's interesting. So the line statement in character mode is used to generate a line or rectangle of alphanumeric symbols or graphic symbols between any two character mode coordinates. 
So of course that's back in character mode. Well, maybe we'll play with that next. So uh, let me get the tape rewound. We'll save this little program out. Let me record past the, the leader on the tape here. We'll save this as test one. First thing we need to do is edit this down to be character based. So we have 63 columns of text, and in this case, we will and eh, we'll leave it at step eight for now. That's a little rough. Uh, what are you doing? And we need to edit 20. Should have done this with variables. We have 16 lines. And at 30, X, Y, insert 63. Should have used change there rather than, well, anyhow, at 30 again, so we've also got to change this to 16 and then per the syntax we put in a string expression oh interesting can't type lowercase characters no surprise hello world Thirty-two. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Delete, delete, insert. Sixty-three. Oh. Change to one. Change to a six. String expression again. I'm assuming these will wrap. Oh. It's interesting. No, that's missed a comma. That's why that looks funny. This seems to me like it's going to blow up. But we'll see what we get. Line XY to X minus Y. Oh, I'll bet syntactically I hmm. go back and look. String expression. I see the word set goes away. String expression. Well, it's got to mean string expression, not single character. Yeah, string expression. Box and box fill. Results in a line of X's. Okay, let's modify this slightly. Edit 30. Fill. Edit 32.
Well, no surprise that that's not exactly interesting at all because of the fills, perhaps. You know, as a kid, uh, I would have been fascinated to play with this. It's a moderate amount of interesting, I guess, now. You know, I cut my teeth on, I'll call it a higher level language, on basic on the Model 1. Before the Model 1, I had done simple assembly language programs, mostly on the 1802. That's just not very exciting. Not nearly as interesting as old graphics demo was. And it's no surprise that the uh, G's end up overriding the H's. really sure if I can do anything about that but there's kind of a boring little somewhat texty demo we'll save that as test 2 Boy, I so want to type C load. Let's go ahead and pull back the first little graphics program. It was at least visually somewhat interesting. Surprised it hasn't loaded by now. Which probably means it's not going to. Well, I think I will move on next to playing with the sprites. I'm making double quotes here, air quotes. Of course, you can't see. Go on to making sprites with the get and put and see what we can do. So when I get something hopefully interesting, I'll come back. Thank you.